Now let's look at how a change in pressure can affect the equilibrium of a gaseous system. Let's try this reaction instead. Colorless N2O4 decomposes into 2NO2 which is brown. This system is now in equilibrium. Now let's change the pressure. A change in what pressure though? If it's a change in the partial pressure of a reactant or product, then it's the same as changing the concentration, which you have just looked at in the previous checkpoint. The, this, the pressure change that we are looking at is the changing the pressure of the entire system. This can be done by decreasing the volume of the reaction vessel, which is just a really cool name for the container you do your experiments in. So let's say, for example, the pressure of the system increases. The system will want to act in a way to counteract it, and it wants to decrease the pressure of the system somehow. How can we decrease the pressure of the system? Let's recall what pressure is caused by. Random particles collide to the side of the reaction vessels with a certain amount of force. The greater the frequency of the collisions and the greater the kinetic energy of the particles, the higher the pressure, of course. How does this help our situation? Let's look at the reaction again. Notice on the left side, there is one mole of gaseous product, but on the right side, there are two moles of gaseous product. Two moles of gas occupy and collide twice as often as one mole of gas. If we want to decrease the pressure of the system, then we must shift the equilibrium position in a direction that reduces the number of moles of gas in the system. In this case, we ought to shift the equilibrium position to the left because there are simply less moles of gas. Does this sound convincing to you? Let's use the equilibrium expression to prove it. Kp equals to PnO2 squared over Pn204. Let us put the total pressure of the system, or P total, in the equation. The partial pressure of each reactant and product is its mole fraction multiplied by the total P. So substituting, we get this, which if we expand and cancel out, we get this, which neatly shows us where P total is. So increasing the total pressure will increase Q, and you know what happens when Q increases. Yes, the equilibrium shifts to the left to decrease the number of moles of NO2. And again, what if we decrease the pressure? We can figure out that using the same logic. Formerly, Le Chatelier's principle, which predicts what you have just understood, tells us when the system pressure is increased, the position of the equilibrium shifts in the direction accompanied by a net decrease in the total number of moles of gas. When pressure is decreased, the position of the equilibrium shifts in the direction which is accompanied by a net increase in the total number of moles of gas. K again is not affected by a change in pressure. So now you know how to explain the effect of concentration and pressure change on a system at equilibrium. Let's move on.